mystery deepens, why does Tennessee have more people than its twin Kentucky despite their similar appearances on the map? This story is shaped by ancient trails, thick forests, and settlers building a nation. Tennessee's wide valleys welcomed those heading west, while Kentucky's rugged mountains blocked their way. With fertile soil and reminders of past conflicts, the land itself influenced their destinies differently. Come with us as we uncover the hidden stories behind the divergent journeys of Tennessee and Kentucky, old routes, new paths in two major neighbor states. Imagine looking at a big map of the United States. You'll notice Tennessee and Kentucky, two states that seem to sit comfortably between the busy, always moving states of the North and the warm, tradition-rich states of the South. This special spot they're in makes a lot of folks compare them. But if you look closely, you'll see something interesting. Tennessee has been getting more and more people moving in, while Kentucky, just a bit to the north, hasn't seen as big a rush. What's the reason behind this? Why aren't as many people flocking to Kentucky? Let's go on a little adventure into the heart of America to figure this out. At first glance, Tennessee and Kentucky are like two peas in a pod. Similar histories, landscapes, and even some shared traditions. Yet when we count the number of people, Tennessee is way ahead. There's got to be something about the land itself, something about the geography, that's making Tennessee more of a magnet for people than Kentucky. Rewind time way back, way before any state lines were drawn, this area, now known as Tennessee and Kentucky, was a bustling hub of ancient cultures. Long before the first Europeans set foot here, Native American tribes were calling this land their home. These tribes weren't just living off the land, they were building communities, trading and shaping the land into what we see today. Around the year 900, an especially important group called the Mississippian culture started spreading out in this area. They were really advanced and set the stage for many of the Native American tribes that came after them. This history is important because it tells us how the land has always had a way of bringing people in. Whether it was the ancient Mississippians or modern day Americans. But something changed along the way. As history marched on, Tennessee started to change faster and in more ways than Kentucky. Maybe it was because of its rivers, valleys and roads that made moving goods and people easier. Or perhaps it was Tennessee's music and vibrant city life that started pulling more folks in. Whatever the reason, Tennessee began to outpace Kentucky in terms of how many people wanted to make it their home. The two areas we are talking about which are right next to each other, share a long history that goes back a lot further than you might think. This history started long before the first European adventurers came to these parts. This shared past is a big reason why these two places, even though they have gone through a lot of changes and have seen different rates of people moving in and building stuff, still feel a connection to each other. Long before the names Tennessee and Kentucky were put on the map, these lands were full of different Native American tribes. These tribes included people who spoke languages like Mogan, Cherokee, and Algonquin. These groups had a strong bond with nature and lived by farming, hunting, and exchanging goods with each other. They had their own ways of life, traditions, and social structures that were very advanced. But like in many communities, there were conflicts among them too. The Cherokee in particular are remembered for having a very organized society. They had their own language and a system of ruling themselves, which was so advanced that there was a time when the United States recognized them as a separate government. This shows just how complex and rich their culture was. These early beginnings are crucial to understand how Tennessee and Kentucky have grown over time and how they've ended up with the different numbers of people 
living in them today. However, the arrival of European explorers in the 1500s started a big change. These explorers from Spain, France, and later Britain were looking for wealth and new territories to claim. Their arrival marked the beginning of a new era for the native tribes, significantly altering their way of life. The indigenous peoples found themselves caught in the struggles between these European powers, which was not just about land, but also involved complex alliances and conflicts. One of the notable conflicts was the Chickasaw Wars in the early 1700s, where the Chickasaw allied with the British to fight against the French and their indigenous allies, the Chakascopai and the Illinois Confederation. As time passed, especially by the mid-18th century, the area that is now known as Kentucky and Tennessee began to attract European settlers, including British colonists. They were drawn by the rich, fertile lands and the promise of new opportunities. These settlers began to establish themselves, starting new lives in what they saw as a new world. A key figure in this period was Daniel Boone, an iconic American frontiersman. He played a major role in opening up the Kentucky region to European settlers. Boone led groups of settlers through the Cumberland Gap, a natural pass through the Appalachian Mount Irons, into the area known as the Heart of the Bluegrass. This was a significant step in the westward expansion and settlement of America. Meanwhile, the path to statehood for Tennessee started with the creation of the Watauga Association in 1772. This was a pioneering attempt by settlers in the frontier to establish a self-governing community. It was one of the first instances of American colonists creating their own government, setting the stage for the development of Tennessee as a state. Now let's step back into the past to uncover the beginnings of these states. We'll explore how their early decisions set them on divergent roads to today, the dramatic nemesis of twin territories. In the early days, the effort to establish local leadership and rules was super important for the area we now call Tennessee. Think of it like this. Imagine your neighborhood starts to decide on its own rules instead of following those of the town next door. That's kind of what happened. Originally, Tennessee was like the backyard of North Carolina, a place really far away from where the main decisions were made. But in 1790, things changed. This area got a new name, the Territory of the United States, south of the Ohio River. This wasn't just a name change. It was like saying, hey, we're our own place now. Soon after, more people moved in, towns popped up, and by 1796, Tennessee was no longer just a piece of land. It became the 16th member of the big family known as the United States. Now, let's talk about Kentucky, which had a story kind of like Tennessee's, but with its own twists. Initially, Kentucky was considered part of Virginia. Imagine living in a place where all the big decisions are made by people living miles away. That's how the folks in Kentucky felt under Virginia's control. They didn't like someone else making all their decisions, especially people all the way over in Richmond, Virginia. They said, we want to make our own choices and tried several times to stand on their own. After dealing with lots of tricky issues, like who owned which pieces of land and making sure everyone agreed on the rules, Kentucky managed to become its own state in 1792, right before Tennessee, becoming the 15th state in our country. This moment, when Tennessee and Kentucky became states, was huge. It wasn't just important for the people living there, it was a big deal for the whole United States. Before this, these places were just the far edges of Virginia and North Carolina, but now, as their own states, they were like new pieces in the big United States puzzle, helping the country stretch further west. However, this expansion, this move towards the west, wasn't all about new beginnings and happy stories. 
For the original inhabitants, the indigenous people who had lived on this land for centuries, this time was filled with loss and sadness. The creation of these new states meant that their lands, the places they called home, were taken over. This happened because of new laws, battles, and lots of new settlers coming into the area. It was a time of big change, and while it helped create the country as we know it, it also led to many difficult times for the people who were here first. Becoming states was a big step for Tennessee and Kentucky. It meant they could have their own rules and take care of their own areas. But this was also a time of many challenges. The people had to build everything from the ground up. Their towns, farms, and laws, they were far from the older states and had to rely on each other a lot. At the same time, the United States was getting bigger, reaching new lands, but this dream of a bigger country meant tough times for the people who were already there, the native tribes, their homes, their hunting grounds, everything they knew was being taken over. This part of history is sad and it's important to remember. Tennessee and Kentucky are unique and interesting parts of America. They don't quite fit neatly into one category. Depending on where you are in these states, you might feel like you're in the South, the North, or even the Midwest. Each place in these states can feel different from the next. From steep mountains to rich, flat farmlands, these natural features have a big influence on how people live, what jobs they have, and the traditions they follow in both states. Let's dive into Tennessee first. This state is split into three main areas, each with its own special look and feel. In East Tennessee, you'll find the Appalachian Mountains with the famous Great Smoky Mountains National Park. This park is a favorite for lots of visitors more than any other national park in the United States. The mountains here are tall and rugged, with valleys that cut deep between them. This landscape wasn't just beautiful to look at, it also set the stage for the history and culture of the area. Long ago, these mountains were like a giant wall. They were tough for the early settlers moving west to get past, shaping the way communities grew and lived. Moving to the middle of the state, there's a different scene. Here, the land levels out a bit, but still has its ups and downs. The Cumberland Plateau and the Highland Rim are like big, natural circles around the Nashville Basin, a lower area in the middle. This middle part of Tennessee, especially around Nashville, has a mix of landscapes. There are flat areas, hills and valleys, all coming together in one place. This variety has helped Middle Tennessee become a center for different types of activities, from farming to music and city life. Let's journey through the natural landscapes that define Tennessee and Kentucky. We'll see how mountains, rivers, and plains have shaped their identities and ways of life. In the heart of Tennessee, the Cumberland Plateau stretches out with its unique landscape of flat-topped mountains known as tablelands, deep valleys known as inn gorges, and hidden treasures like coal beneath the ground. Moving towards the center, the Nashville Basin stands out with its very fertile earth, making it a perfect place for growing crops. This area has seen a lot of change over time. Shifting from mostly farming land to a bustling mix of city life and industrial growth. Then, if we go all the way to the western end of the state, we encounter the Mississippi Alluvial Plain. This area is really flat and stretches out towards the Mississippi River, filled with super fertile soil that's just right for farming big fields of cotton, soybeans and corn. These crops are really important for the area's money-making and living. Plus, the Mississippi River isn't just a river. It's a crucial path for moving goods and a fun place for people to enjoy. Let's journey through the natural landscapes that define Tennessee and Kentucky. We'll see how mountains, rivers, and plains have shaped their identities and ways of life. The Silent Battle of Kentucky. 
Now, let's explore Kentucky. Tennessee's neighbor, even though they share some bits of nature, Kentucky has its own special look and feel with five big areas that make it up. The Cumberland Plateau, the Bluegrass Region, the Penny Royal Plateau, the Western Coal Fields, and the Jackson Purchase. The Cumberland Plateau in eastern Kentucky is like its twin in Tennessee, filled with tough mountain scenery and valuable stuff like coal under its surface. But then we have the heart of Kentucky, the Bluegrass Region, which is famous worldwide, picture gentle hills that roll on and on, covered in fertile soil that makes plants grow really well. This beautiful land isn't just nice to look at, it's perfect for raising horses, which is something Kentucky is known for all around the globe. Next up is the Penny Royal Plateau, which is to the south and west. This place is really something with its cast landscape, that means it's got a lot of sinkholes and natural springs, and it's home to the massive mammoth cave system. Imagine walking through the longest cave system in the world. That's right here in Kentucky. This shows just how cool and different the Earth can be. Lastly, in the west of Kentucky, we have the Western Coal Fields and the Jackson Purchase. These parts are flatter compared to the rest with lots of rivers and land that's really good for farming and mining too. Each of these areas, with their own kinds of lands and water, play a big part in the way people live, work and play in Kentucky. Together, the diverse landscapes of Tennessee and Kentucky paint a picture of a region rich with different kinds of places, from towering mountains and fertile valleys to vast caves and wide, flat fields. These lands tell stories of the past and present, shaping the lives of the people who live there and offering a glimpse into the varied tapestry that makes up this part of the United States. From farming to horse racing, from coal mining to city building, the land has a deep connection to the culture and economy of both states, making each part of them unique and important in its own right. The landscapes of Tennessee and Kentucky are quite alike, with both boasting the mountainous terrains of the Appalachians, the rich, productive fields in their central regions, and stretching out towards the wide, flowing Mississippi River in the west. These two states, sitting side by side in the middle of the United States, not only share physical borders, but also have many of the same types of natural scenery and a shared history as part of America's development. However, one interesting question arises when we look at their populations. Why does Tennessee have so many more people living there than Kentucky? Tennessee and Kentucky have a lot in common, but they've followed different paths throughout history. These paths have led to different stories of growth and change, especially when we talk about how many people live in each state, the reasons behind Tennessee having a larger population than Kentucky are varied and cover historical, economic, and social aspects that have influenced how each state has developed over the years. In the early days of America's expansion to the West, Tennessee was seen as a sort of doorway to new lands. This was largely because of the Cumberland Gap, a natural break in the Appalachian Mountains. This gap was like a big open door for people looking to move west. A lot more of these people ended up in Tennessee rather than Kentucky. Why? Well, Tennessee had larger valleys and more open land south of the mountains, which were easier for settlers to live in and farm than Kentucky's tougher, more uneven mountain areas. This early wave of people moving in helped Tennessee grow quickly. They settled down, built homes, and started communities, which led to the rise of big towns and cities earlier than in many other places. Knoxville, for example, grew as a major city in the eastern part of Tennessee, becoming an important center for people moving and living in the area. 
On top of the natural paths that led people into Tennessee, other factors played a part too. Tennessee's valleys and waterways were not just good for farming, they were also great for moving goods and traveling. Over time, as more people came, businesses and industries started to grow. This drew even more people looking for work and a better life. Kentucky, while beautiful and rich in resources, didn't have the same kind of natural pathways that made large-scale settlement and urban development as straightforward as in Tennessee. Kentucky's Appalachian regions were harder to move through and settle in, which slowed down the influx of settlers and the growth of big towns in those areas. Moreover, Tennessee's strategic location and natural resources led to the development of significant industries over time, further attracting people for work and contributing to its larger population. From the cotton fields to the music industries in cities like Nashville and Memphis, Tennessee offered various economic opportunities that Kentucky, with its more rugged terrain and slower development of infrastructure, could not match at the same pace. Now we'll dive into modern times to see why Tennessee is bustling and Kentucky is more laid back. We'll explore the impact of industries, culture and government decisions. City lights versus cold nights. Both Tennessee and Kentucky started off pretty much the same way. They were both heavily into farming, growing crops and living off the land. But as time went on, these two neighbors began to grow up a bit differently, almost like siblings choosing different careers. Tennessee, for instance, started branching out. Think of it like someone who decides to learn lots of different skills instead of just one. Tennessee didn't just stick to farming, it started making all sorts of things, from cars to electronic gadgets. Then it thought, why not help people with their money or health? So it got into banking and healthcare too. But one of the coolest things Tennessee did was dive into the world of music and entertainment, especially in a city you might have heard of. Nashville, Nashville isn't just any city. It's like the superstar of music cities, known all around the globe for its tunes and tunesmiths. This made Tennessee pretty popular and brought in lots of people wanting to be part of that music scene or just to enjoy it. Kentucky was like the sibling who loved what they knew and stuck with it. It held on tight to coal mining, which was super important back in the day. But here's the thing, while Kentucky was holding on to coal, the rest of the world started looking at different ways to power up their lives, like using the sun or the wind. As this happened, Kentucky's main job wasn't as needed anymore. This put Kentucky in a tough spot because it wasn't as ready to jump into new kinds of jobs like Tennessee was. At the same time, there was this big city right next door in Ohio called Cincinnati. Cincinnati was like the cool neighbor with all the latest gadgets and plenty of jobs. So people in Kentucky started thinking, maybe I'll move there or work there since it's so close and has lots of opportunities. This meant that even fewer people were staying in Kentucky or thinking about moving there, which made it a bit harder for Kentucky to grow and to shine like Tennessee. After World War II, Tennessee started spending a lot of money on building things like roads, bridges, and public services. This was a big deal because it made life better in Tennessee and made more companies want to set up there. A huge project that shows this is the Tennessee Valley Authority, or TVA for short, started in the 1930s. The TVA did a lot of things. It gave jobs to people, made electricity more available, which was a big deal back then, controlled flooding, and made rivers easier to travel on. All of this helped Tennessee a lot, making its cities grow and attracting more people because there were more jobs and better living conditions. Now, when we look at today, cities in Tennessee, like Nashville and Memphis, are growing fast. People want to live there for lots of reasons. 
The taxes aren't too high. It doesn't cost too much to live there compared to other places and the quality of life is seen as really good. This makes the state a great place for older people looking to settle down, young people starting their careers and families looking for a nice place to live. Nashville isn't just about music anymore. It's also a big spot for healthcare jobs and colleges. This mix of good things has made Tennessee a place where lots of different people want to move to and build their lives. Kentucky has been growing too, but not as fast as Tennessee. It has kept its focus on old style businesses like coal mining and farming. These jobs used to be very important, but are not as big as they used to be because the world is changing. Even though Kentucky is trying to add different kinds of jobs and is known all over as the best place for bourbon, a type of American whiskey, its growth is slower compared to Tennessee. Now let's look at the big cities. Tennessee is home to some really big cities. Nashville, the biggest, has over 2 million people living there. Then there's Memphis with about 1.3 million people, Knoxville with around 900,000, and Chattanooga with about 550,000. These cities are buzzing with activity and are a big reason why so many people are moving to Tennessee. On the other side, Kentucky's biggest city is Louisville with about 1.3 million people, which is similar to Memphis in Tennessee. But after Louisville, the cities get smaller much quicker. Lexington has around 500,000 people and Bowling Green has about 180,000. Also, it's interesting to note that a good chunk of people from Kentucky, around 450,000, choose to live in the Cincinnati area in Ohio, which is right across the northern border of Kentucky. Besides the big cities and jobs, there's something interesting about how Tennessee and Kentucky are laid out on the map. They share a long border, but there's a strange dip in the southwest part of their border. It's an unusual twist in what would otherwise be a straight line separating them. This little dip is a quirk of geography, just a random bit of the land that makes you wonder how borders are decided. So, while Kentucky and Tennessee are a lot alike in size and the kind of land they have, they are growing at different speeds. Tennessee has been adding all sorts of new businesses and attractions bringing in more people and building bigger cities. Kentucky is growing too, but at a slower pace, sticking more to its traditional roots in farming and coal mining while slowly starting to change. Let's unravel the historical puzzles that have left their marks. We'll discover how old decisions and natural landmarks drew the unique lines between these two states. Kentucky's quirky border tale. When you look at a map, you might notice that the bottom line of Kentucky doesn't go straight across. Instead, it dips down a bit on the left side. This isn't just a random choice. It goes back to old stories, decisions, and even problems with map making from when America was just starting out. Long ago, when people were trying to figure out where Kentucky ended and the next place started, they didn't have the tools we have now. They like to use big, natural things like rivers to mark where one area stopped and another began. Because rivers are easy to see and don't move much, this made it simpler for everyone to agree on where the borders were. But over in the area we're talking about, there wasn't a Hackney River to use as a line between what was then the western part of Virginia and North Carolina. So the people decided to use an invisible line instead one you can only see on a map, they chose the line of latitude called 36 degree 30 art or north. This line was supposed to go straight across, marking the bottom of Kentucky, except for a little piece to the east of the Tennessee River. Now here's where it gets even more interesting. The dip in Kentucky's border is there because of a very old argument Tennessee had. Tennessee said that based on an old British map from 1665, 
Its territory should stretch all the way west from North Carolina, and this included the land making up the dip. Back then, maps weren't very good, and people made a lot of mistakes when measuring land. Because of these old errors and Tennessee's claims, there ended up being a mix-up that moved the line about 12 miles from where it should have been. This whole situation shows how tricky it was to draw lines on the land without the right tools and how old decisions and mistakes can shape what we see on the map today. The way Kentucky's border dips isn't just a weird quirk, it's a piece of history showing us the struggles and debates of the people who were trying to figure out where one state ended and another began. This 12-mile mistake from long ago didn't just happen. It was the result of many things. Old rules from when America was a colony, the challenges of exploring and mapping wild, unknown lands, and the push and pull between what different groups wanted. These early Americans used the stars, the sun, and their best guesses to draw lines that turned into the borders we know now. But those lines weren't perfect, and the dip in Kentucky's border is a reminder of that. It's a little bit of history that tells a story about how even the smallest details on a map can have big stories behind them, filled with arguments, explorations, and the hard work of building a country. Back in 1818, the United States made a big deal with the Chickasaw Nation, a group of Native Americans. They agreed to let the U.S. take over some land that's now in the western parts of Kentucky and Tennessee. This land is right where both states dip down on the map. They chose this area because it sits between two big rivers, the Mississippi and the Tennessee, and also fits within a specific line across the map, the 36 degree, 30, yeah, north latitude. This whole deal, called the Jackson Purchase, changed the maps of Kentucky and Tennessee. It added a chunk of land to each state that wasn't there before. This is why, when you look at a map, you see that southward dip along their borders. It's all because of an agreement made way back in 1818. Right now, Tennessee has more people living in it than Kentucky. But here's something interesting. Kentucky is starting to grow too. Cities in Kentucky, like Louisville, are becoming more well-known across the country. Louisville is starting to make a name for itself, just like Nashville did in Tennessee. Nashville is known for music and culture, and now Louisville is also stepping up, showing what it has to offer. So what does all this mean? It means that even though Tennessee has been ahead in terms of how many people live there and how well-known its cities are, Kentucky is starting to move up too. It's like when someone starts to run faster in a race and begins to catch up to the person in front of them. Kentucky's cities are growing and more people are starting to notice what Kentucky has to offer. In the future, we might see Kentucky getting closer to Tennessee in terms of how many people live there and how famous its cities become. Just like how Nashville has become a big deal because of its music and culture, Louisville and other Kentucky cities could become just as important for their own unique reasons. So what truly sets Tennessee apart from Kentucky is shaping one to thrive, while the other remains silent. Could historical pathways, geographical blessings, or unseen cultural forces be the key? We want to hear your thoughts. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more.